Let's have a session on interest rates. So definition of interest rates is an interest rate is the cost of borrowing money. That's for lending money. Or it can be the return on investment. That's for saving money. Now, in the UK, interest rates are set by the Bank of England and the Bank of England uses interest rates as its main weapon, its main tool to keep inflation in check. It's usually the case as follows. If inflation is high, it's above the 2% target, then interest rates will be increased because that will reduce consumption, reduce investment by businesses. On the other side, if inflation is lower than the 2% target of inflation, then interest rates will be lowered to try and stimulate consumption, stimulate investment in an economy. Now, with interest rates, the interest rate is set by the Bank of England. That's called the base rate. And the base rate is only used by commercial banks. That's like Barclays, HSBC or Monzo or Starling Bank. All of those are commercial banks. Now, commercial banks will pass on that interest rate to consumers, to producers through loans. Loans could be mortgages or it could be credit cards or it could be personal loans. But the key thing is on each of those products, there's a different interest rate that's passed on to consumers and producers, producers being businesses. So therefore, there are different interest rates throughout an economy. But when we talk about the one single interest rate, we tend to be talking about the base rate. Now let's get back to this. So an interest rate is the cost of borrowing money for lending. So an example of that would be the percentage of a loan that is charged as interest to the borrower. So I'll give you an example here. If you're taking out a loan, there's a 10% interest rate per annum, and that's on a thousand pound loan. So doing some simple maths on that, the repayment on that loan, you've taken out a thousand pound loan at 10%, will be 1,000 pounds, you've got to pay that loan back, and then you need to pay 10% of the thousand pounds. Of course, that bit is a hundred pounds, thousand plus a hundred, the hundred pounds is the extra interest you need to pay on borrowing that money. That comes to £1,100 and that is the total repayment you'll have on a £1,000 loan at an interest rate of 10% per annum per year. Now that's on the cost of borrowing money, the debt side. On the other side, the savings side, the return on investment, sometimes the reward for putting your money in a bank, saving. So the percentage of savings that is paid as interest to the saver, the reward for saving money. An example here is you might get an 8% interest rate per annum per year on a thousand pounds of savings. So to work out the return, it will simply be 1,000 pounds, your own money, that's not going anywhere, you've put that in the bank, but the reward is 8% of that money, so 8% of a thousand pounds, which is 80 pounds, add those two numbers together and you get 1,080 pounds. So therefore, there's two examples of borrowing money and the return on investment from saving money. So taking a simplistic banking model, it's likely to be the case that a high street bank, a commercial bank like Barclays, like Monzo, will likely have a higher cost of borrowing interest rate as opposed to the return on investment, the reward for saving will likely be lower. The reason why is this is how a bank will make profits. So we have a thousand pounds, someone puts a thousand pounds in the bank, they earn 8% on that. So at the end of the year, for leaving their money in the bank, they get 80 pounds. And then the bank will look to loan out that thousand pounds and they might charge 10% on that interest rate. So therefore the bank is making a hundred pounds here, but of course they need to pay 80 of that hundred pounds back to that other individual who put the money in the bank. And so the margin here, the difference between the total repayments and the savings would be 20 pounds. And that's how a bank will make money. Now that's the simplistic banking model. Of course, in modern day, it's got more complicated with derivatives and so forth, but that's just an interesting way to understand the banking system. Now, the next thing to think about is impacts on interest rates. Now, interest rates can go up or they can go down. They can be increasing or they can be decreasing. And it's important to be aware of the different impacts on consumers and producers. For more details on that, click the card up there. I hope that helps and I'll see you at the next sesh.